I'm here with Dr. Nadia Harbeck. She's head of the Interdisciplinary Breast Center at the University Hospital of Cologne in Germany, and she's presenting the paper, Urokinase Plasminogen Activator System, a Multifunctional Drug Target. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Would you begin by discussing the plasminogen activator system and its role in tumor invasion and metastasis in solid tumors? The plasminogen activator system with its key components, UPA receptor, your kinase type plasminogen activator, and its type 1 inhibitor, PI1, are actually essential components also for physiological well-being. They play a role in um, increasing of the placenta into the uterine wall. They play a role in wound healing, and they play a role in blood coagulation. We've noticed that in tumor tissue there is a increased amounts of these factors. So there were the research started probably in the 1980s, 1990s, when colleagues actually from from my former institution, uh, Manfred Schmidt and Fritz Jenicke, found out that there is, for example, increased UPA and PI1 content in primary breast cancer. So we've since known that these factors play a role in solid tumors, not just breast cancer, but all other solid tumors, colorectal cancer, lung cancer, for example. And usually what researchers observe is that high values of these factors are present in the tumor tissue. And in most diseases they've been looked at, high values are also linked to poor outcome. And what are the key components in the plasminogen activator system that have that have an impact on prognosis and that may influence treatment decisions? Basically, if, uh, the treatment decisions are Im impacted on by UPA and PI1. High values in breast tissue, but also in other solid tumor tissue, are linked to poor prognosis. And in the first, in the beginning, when we found that in the early 1990s, we found that the high values of UPA as well as its inhibitor PI1 are linked to poor prognosis was sort of a surprise because usually an inhibitor does something good. But then a research came along that showed that PI1 is also involved in adhesion and migration. So these factors play a key role in tumor metastasis and, and enhance all the components a tumor cell needs in order to ex extravasate out of the tumor into the blood vessels, the lymph vessels, and then invade in other parts and also migrate through the body. Would you discuss its potential as a drug target and where the clinical trials are on this? So for breast cancer, what we found was that high values are linked to poor prognosis. There's also a prospective clinical trial starting in the 1990s run by a former colleague of mine, Fritz Jenicke, showing that high note negative breast cancer patients with high values of UPN PI1 have poor prognosis. There's 10-year follow-up data from this trial, and their overall survival in the low-risk group without any adjuvant systemic treatment is about 90% after 10 years. So these patients really don't need any adjuvant chemotherapy, for example. And high values of these factors are linked to poor outcome about 10-year uh, survival of about 80%. So these patients would have needed chemotherapy. And in the trial, we saw that if we gave them chemotherapy, they did better and their risk for relapse decreased. So that, that's the first trial that showed that their prognostic factors and validated these factors at level one of evidence. So the obvious thing, if you have factors that are linked to outcome, was to look at them whether they are also good as a drug target, whether you n not just can only influence life of the patients by chemotherapy, but also by giving them a more specific therapy. And there's actually a small uh, compound called WX671, uh, where there have been clinical trials in pancreatic cancer and in breast cancer, looking at this small UPA inhibitor on what it does towards um, patients' well-being. And the data from the pancreatic cancer trial we've seen at ASCO last, uh, last year, and actually was in locally advanced, non-metastatic pancreatic cancer together with gemcitabine chemotherapy, and patients who got the higher dose of the little UPA inhibitor together with the chemotherapy had a longer overall survival than those patients who just got chemotherapy alone. So this is very, very early, but very interesting data. In particular, while, while the, because the researchers didn't see any toxicity that was added on, on top of the chemotherapy, so the drug is really well tolerated. And Dr. Harbeck, what are the next steps in this research? 
So the next steps which I'm most excited about is the phase two breast cancer trial which we just mm -hmm. completed, 130 patients, first line metastatic breast cancer, looking at WX671 together with capecitamine chemotherapy, a placebo control trial, and I've had my own institution, I've treated about 20 patients in the trial and we saw very good tolerability, even though it was placebo controlled, there was nothing that sort of surprised us on top of the baseline chemotherapy toxicities and we saw patients with very, very long treatment periods. That's the same thing also the uh, colleagues in pancreatic cancer observed. So I'm very excited. We're probably going to uh, collect all the data by early next year and hopefully we'll see some results in 2012. And this will show whether the UPA system is not just a good prognostic marker but also a valuable drug target. Dr. Harbeck, thank you so much. You're welcome.